Hi everyone, welcome to the lecture number 18. First of all, I'm recording this lecture pretty late. It's about 3.30 a.m. in the morning. The reason why I'm recording it very late is because I am going out for two days and I don't want to break this flow. I want you to be consistent in following these lectures and I want myself also to be consistent in uploading these lectures. Okay. So give a like and a comment to this video before you start. Now, the flood field algorithm is a very famous algorithm. It is a very frequently used algorithm. Also, it is very interesting. We all have used this algorithm in the past. Okay. So let me just remind you of that. So if you remember those computer lectures, the not the lectures exactly, the computer labs that we used to have in the primary school. The one of the most famous application was MS Paint. We all use that MS Paint to draw the sceneries, to draw the hut, the tree, the rivers and the sun, especially those birds. So we used to draw on MS Paint. Now there was a tool on MS Paint if you remember. That tool was very useful in coloring our picture, in coloring our sceneries. Okay. We just need to drop one drop of a color and the entire region will be filled with that color. Okay. That was the flood fill algorithm. All right. So let's say, uh, let me draw, let me go to the board and draw the diagram. So let's say this is one of my image. Inside this, I want to fill a particular color. Let's say I want to fill the yellow color. So I will pick that tool. Using that tool, I will drop one yellow drop there. Okay. And that will cover the entire part. The entire circle will be colored in yellow. Okay. Two things that we can notice over here is first, the entire region will be covered with yellow. Second thing is the color is not going to spilled out. It will not go out of this green boundary. Okay. Oh, although I am not coloring it properly, but this is what used to happen, right? This is the flood fill algorithm. I will also demonstrate with the help of the pixels. So basically the MS paint that we use to draw on and the screen that we see right in front of us, it is all pixelated. There are pixels. Okay. If you're aware of it, there are tiny pixels, the square boxes and each of that pixel is colored by a specific color. Okay. So let me, let me draw those pixels over here. So let's say this is the grid that we have. This is the pixelated grid or let us consider this to be the MS paint sheet. Okay. Now again, I will draw that uh, circle over here. So let us say this is the circle. This is the circle. All right. Now inside the circle, I want to color using any random color. Let's say, uh, let's say this, this particular color. Okay. So what I will do is I will drop just a single drop of this color over any of the pixel, any of the pixel or any of the cell within this green colored boundary. Okay. This is the green colored boundary. Oh, oops. This is the green colored boundary inside this green colored boundary. I will just drop one drop of this color. Let's, let's call this coordinate as X comma Y. Let's call this pixel, uh, the cell coordinate as X comma Y. I will drop one drop of this color and the entire region will be colored using this color. Okay. How will it happen? It will happen with the help of recursion. Okay. So if we talk about recursion, let us, let us just zoom it a bit over here. So let us talk about recursion. So we are going to start from this particular cell, right? We are going to start from this particular cell. We will color this with this, uh, this peach color. Now, after coloring this, I will ask recursion to handle rest of the task, basically to spread this color in the rest of the region. What is the rest of the region? Rest of the region is going to this direction, going to this direction, going to this direction and going to this direction, up, down, right and left, going in all of these four directions. Sometimes uh, we also go in these directions as well in these uh, basically diagonals. But as of now, just ignore these four diagonals. Let us just consider these four directions only. Okay. So I will ask recursion to do the same task in this particular region. I will ask recursion to do the same task in the right region. I will ask recursion to do the same task in downward. I will ask recursion to do the same task in the upward direction. Okay. And when I will start writing the code, you will feel it's the easiest problem. There are only four or five lines of code and you will be able to understand it perfectly once we start coding it. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I will be 
in the question i will be given a particular cell from where i need to start okay also i will be having boundaries okay i will be having boundaries boundaries will be colored using a different color so as we can see as we can see over here the boundaries of green color and we are coloring with the help of a peach color okay so let's say uh, let me just demonstrate you a little bit of working so let's say i start from this particular cell if i start from this particular cell then let's say i called recursion to this particular cell then it it itself called recursion to this particular cell and it itself calls recursion to this particular cell but here we will figure out that we are going in the wrong direction why are we going in the wrong direction because we are touching the boundary we should not change the color of the boundary as soon as we hit the boundary we should come back okay we should come back to here then we will explore the other direction okay we'll explore this direction then from here we will again try to go here but then there's again a blockage because this is again the boundary so we'll come back again go to this direction color this go to this direction color this one go to this direction color this one then this one then this as soon as we come here again we are hitting the boundary so return back then color in this direction so randomly i will start coloring okay recursion will start coloring it my task would be to simply color a particular cell the current cell on which i am currently standing on and then ask recursion to spread the color in four directions okay i will ask recursion to spread the color in four directions so basically i will have to make four recursive calls in each of these directions all right now we already saw that as soon as we hit the boundary we are going to return back from there okay as soon as we hit the boundary we are going to return back one more thing as let's say if i want to color from here if i want to color start coloring from here so let's say i'm coloring this then this then this then this then if i cannot go outside this grid okay i cannot go outside this grid so i should also make sure that i should not cross it okay similarly i should not cross from the top i should not cross from here similarly i should not cross from here similarly i should not cross from here so these are again four boundary conditions okay i will be handling those conditions as soon as i hit this boundary or this any of these boundaries i will return from there okay all right now on what all cells should i color on what all cells should i color so i should be coloring those cells which are empty okay those cells which are empty in the question empty is denoted by a different notation so empty is denoted by basically okay let me go to the question itself so here we have the question you can read the problem statement it is pretty simple after that you can see the example first of all the colors here are represented by numbers okay we cannot represent color over here so we are representing those colors by numbers one is representing a particular color seven is representing another color five is representing another color and so on okay now the question is to start from this particular cell this particular cell if i talk about index it will be the index number 1 comma 2 index number 1 comma 2 okay i will start from the index number 1 comma 2 i will start the flood fill algorithm and what all cells will i change i will change all the adjacent cells which are of the old color 3 okay so the, the old color was 3 the old color was 3 okay so we will consider this color to be the empty cells okay i will consider this color to be the empty cell so all the threes will denote empty cell for me i will start with this particular uh, cell which is 1 comma 2 and i will start spreading in all the directions for me the boundaries are going to be this one this one this seven over here this five over here this five over here this five over here this this two over here so this will be the boundary for me <coughs> sorry for that <coughs> the new color is 8 so i need to change all these threes with 8 okay so now let us start doing this you will you're going to feel that this is one of the easiest problem once i start coding this first of all let me uh take the old color old color image of i comma j it is denoting the old color all right let me now make the void helper function this time i'm not going to write the function's name is help i will write flood okay flood int i int j it denotes the current cell on which i am currently standing on then i will have this image of course okay then i will have the old color why do i do i need to keep the old color i need to keep it because the old color denotes the empty cells for me okay i need to change all the uh, old color pixel to the new color so this old color will represent 
empty cell to me int new color okay there's one more thing okay let's come to that later first of all uh, what i will do is i will start coloring let's say i'm standing on a particular cell okay first of all if it is a wrong cell uh, what are the what are the possibilities for a cell to be a wrong cell first of all it should not be the boundary okay if it is a boundary it's a wrong cell so i'm writing the base condition first uh, so it is very rare that i start from the base conditions but yes here the base conditions become necessary to explain you first otherwise you can write it later on as well but let me explain you it will become much more clear if i take the base conditions first so if i'm crossing the boundary that means if i is equal to zero or if uh, j is going negative basically again i'm trying to attempt to cross the boundary then let's say if i is equal to equal to n again trying to attempt try attempting to cross the boundary here i should also take n comma m okay n comma m will basically denote the boundaries okay n comma m is the size of the image right so it will denote the boundaries or if j is equal to equal to m it simply means that all of these four conditions means that i am trying to cross the boundary so i should return false apart from that uh, one more thing image i comma j it basically denotes the current cell okay the current cell if the color of the current cell if it is not equal to the old color if it is not equal to the old color it simply means that i am basically coming on a boundary okay a different color which i should not change so i should return from here return in all these conditions okay in all these conditions simply return either you are trying to go wrong basically you are trying to cross the grid self or you are standing on a wrong color which you should not change because that's the boundary that's the green colored boundary or any colored boundary which i do not want to change what i want to change i only want to change those cells whose color is same as the old or uh, the old color okay all right now there's one more thing so uh, let's say let us say uh, if i'm trying to change a particular color can i revisit it again no there's no way i can revisit it again uh, sometimes it might be possible we will handle those cases okay we will handle those cases so this is it uh, yeah now after verifying that we are not on the boundary and we are currently standing on the right cell which we want to change we will change that cell okay we will change that cell image of i comma j change it to the new color okay changed after that what will you do you will not do anything you will take the help of recursion to do the same coloring on the left side on the top on the bottom and on the right side so i will call the same function flood with i plus 1 okay with j image old color new color n and m okay so this is going to the downward direction i plus 1 means going to the downward direction if i do i minus 1 it will it means that i'm going to the upward direction okay i'm asking recursion to do the same coloring in the upward direction then i am going to the this is the right side i'm going to the right side then j minus 1 i'm going to the left side so i have covered all the four directions recursion is going to handle it and that's it okay done this is the entire code this is the flood fill algorithm we are done with this okay we are first of all we are making sure that the current cell on which we are currently standing on it is not it is not crossing the boundary and it is not a different color okay if it is a different color basically that also denotes the boundary of the figure or the diagram okay so after verifying this we are sure that we need to change it so we are changing it we are done with our task now we will ask recursion to handle rest of the task okay rest of the task in all the four directions done in some questions you might be uh, asked in eight directions and eight directions include four diagonals as well the top uh, the top left the top right the bottom left the bottom right those four di diagonals also comes into picture and you can include them as well okay done so this is the entire question let me call this function flow flood from here i comma j will be x comma y initially then we have image then what else uh, we have the old color then we have the new color then we have n and m okay 
and then we will finally return the image and we need to declare n is equal to image dot size and m is equal to image zero dot size done let me run this it's a pretty small code I'm just doubting myself now whether it is correct or not. Oops, it is not correct. I was not declared in this scope. Where is I? Where is I? In the line number 20, in the line number 12. It's not IJ, it's X5. Okay. Let us see what else. Okay, there's a runtime error. Uh, this runtime error usually occurs because we might be calling recursion infinite times, infinite recursive calls. Okay. And the case which I can basically realize is sometimes it might be possible that the old color is also three, the new color is also three. So just in this case, the old color was three, the new color was eight, right? They both were different. Sometimes it might be possible that they both are same. So in that scenario, what's going to happen? Let's say we start from this three and the new color is also three. So we will change the color of three to three. Okay, then maybe we will go to the right side. We'll go to the right side. We will change the color of this three to the new three and then we will go to the right side. If we go to the right side, we will return basically because we are crossing the boundary. We will return. We will come back again to this particular cell. Now from here, let us say we go to the left side. Okay. In the left side also, we will find that, okay, this is three and we need to change three to the new color three and we will again change this three to the new color three. From here again, we will go to the right side. From here again, we will go to the right side. Okay, and change this to the new three. Then again, we will go to the left side and to the right side and to the left and to the right and will keep on happening. It will form the infinite recursive calls. That's why this case was not arising when we had different colors. Okay, why we are not arising at this particular case? Because let's say we change this three to eight. Now we are going to the right side. We also change this three to eight. Now, if we go to the left side, this will already be eight. This will already be eight, right? So this is a different color for us and we only change those colors which are same as the old color, not the new color, right? So that's why in the case when both are different, nothing is going to happen. But in the case when both are same, we will get an infinite loop or an infinite recursive calls. Okay, we will basically hang at a single, a single place. So for that, uh, what I can do is if the old color is equal to equal to the new color, simply return the image as it is okay if the old color is same as the new color obviously we, nothing is going to happen right simply return the image submit this okay so i hope it will yeah it gives us the correct answer and it is absolutely fine now uh, talking about the space complexity and time complexity first of all you should pause the video and then try to think of space and time complexities okay now i suppose that you already brainstormed upon the space and time complexity let me now discuss it so we have the entire grid of m cross n size right first of all let us say in the worst case we are asked to color the entire grid okay in that case i will have to visit each of the grid one by one all right so i will be visiting n cross m number of cells so the time complexity becomes n cross m all right talking about the space complexity so it might be possible that i'm going to each one of the cells one by one and there are n cross m number of cells and each cells uh, each one of them is waiting for the other cells to get finished it might be possible that we form a recursion tree which is just uh, like a linked list a huge recursion tree with the height as m cross n because there are m cross n number of nodes and they all are stacked upon one another okay so that kind of recursion tree will be formed and that will be the size of the recursion stack uh, m cross n so this will be the space complexity required okay all right so this is it for the question i hope you enjoyed this it was a pretty simple question a very simple one in fact in the next episode, we'll be solving a similar kind of problem, but a uh, little tricky, just a little tricky, not so much. Okay, that will also be an easy problem, but that will also be a grid problem. All right. So see you in the next lecture. Bye bye. Take care.